Hello NBA fans, and welcome to the 14th episode of the NBA, the week that was. It was quite the exhilarating week in the NBA. Many games had outcomes that no one expected, including major upsets and the third longest game in NBA history. Overall, I had a great time analyzing games this week, and I hope you experience last week's games through my voice. Let's get right into the latest edition of the NBA, the week that was. On Sunday, the Knicks got their first win in Madison Square Garden since December 1st. Imagine being so horrid as a team that you can't win in your own arena for almost three months. Crazy. Anyways, the Knicks had a surprising win against the Spurs, 130-118. to I guess both teams decided to stop playing defense in this high-scoring affair. Dennis Smith Jr. had arguably one of the best games of his career, with him dropping 19 points, 13 assists, and 6 rebounds. DeMar DeRozan's 32.9 rebound performance could not translate into a win for the Spurs. The Spurs are currently locked in an intense battle with the Clippers, Kings, and Lakers for the 7th and 8th spots in the playoffs. The Lakers are in my mind, completely out of the playoffs, but that's something I'll be ranting about later on in this episode. That leaves three teams for two spots. All of them have relatively easy schedules going into the home stretch of the season. However, the Kings do play the Spurs in one of the last games of the season for both teams. If I had to predict one of these three teams falling off, it will be the Clippers. They traded their leading scorer and rebounder in Tobias Harris in a move for the future during the trade deadline. I believe losses are bound to come even with the emergence of Montrez Harrell as a minor star and Lou Williams continued scoring off the bench. Having said that, anything can happen in the current NBA, so let's see if the experience of the Spurs will pay off in the end. A monster performance by Carl Anthony Towns led the way for the Timberwolves in the defeat of the Kings 112-105. His 34-point, 21-rebound, and 5-assist night proved why he's a two-time All-Star in just three seasons of being in the league. The Kings' first-round pick in Marvin Bagley did show up with 25 points and 11 rebounds, but it was nowhere near enough for Sacramento. In my eyes, the Kings have been the biggest surprise of the season, just ahead of the Nets. No one expected them to be major contenders for a playoff spot after going 27-55 and 55 just last season and not adding anyone too good. The leadership of De'Aaron Fox and Buddy Heald have brought to this team has been invaluable. Even though they are both under the age of 25, they are the biggest reason of the Kings' success. Now that the players have shown that they are both leaders on and off the court, the front office attempted to bolster their squad by adding championship winner in Harrison Barnes. Let's see if his volume shooting, along with Buddy Hill's three-point marksmanship and Fox's passing and speed, can lead the Kings to an end of a league-high playoff drought of 12 hard-fought years. I feel I sit here every week talking about the Celtics' problems and why they have, a let, they have let down everyone in the NBA community. The Raptors absolutely massacred the Celtics 118-95. to Unlike the Celtics, it was a great team performance for the Raptors. Pascal Siakam led all scorers with 25 points and 8 rebounds. The Celtics didn't have a single performance which was notable enough to speak about. On pa- paper, these teams are very even. So why was there a blowout? Kyrie Irving and Kawhi Leonard match up as the superstars, Pascal Siakam and Jason Tatum as the second stars, and Al Horford and Marcus Hall as the all-around veteran centers. What is wrong with the Celtics? Two words, effort and chemistry. I believe if the Celtics have the mindset and will to win every game they play in, it shouldn't be too hard. They have possibly the deepest roster in the NBA and have great draft picks coming up due to Danny Ainge's great mind. For those who don't know, Danny Ainge was a former Celtics star who became their general manager and completely transformed the team into what it is today. Going back to my previous point, one might ask, why don't they have the will? Why don't they have the mindset? That's where the chemistry comes in. I believe Kyrie Irving has single-handedly ruined the chemistry of the Celtics. His actions on the court and words off the court have taken a big toll on young guys like Jason Tatum, Terry Rozier, and Jalen Brown. I believe the Celtics should move on from Kyrie next season. Let him walk. He's a free agent. Let him go. Let Terry Rozier, a point guard who almost led you to the finals last year, take the reins. Let's see what the Celtics do. But one thing's for sure, stop whatever they are doing right now and make a change. 
I'm going to speak about back-to-back Heat games, but this is the game where I focus on the Heat. Mr. Dwayne Wade, Wade County, the GOAT of Miami, hit a one-footed, off-balance three after getting blocked to win the game for the Heat. They were down two with 10 seconds to go. They give the ball to Dion Waiters, who gives it to Wade. Wade shoots a three and is blocked by Jordan Bell. But wait, there's more. He gets his own rebound and with less than a tenth of a second, he shoots the ball up and banks into the three. Miami went wild as they witnessed vintage Wade for one of the last times. Along with the game winner, he had 25 points and 7 rebounds off the bench. Why does he need to retire? Wade is one of the most loved players in NBA history and he's only 36. Vince Carter's 42, he's not retiring next year. I don't think there's one person on this planet besides Wade himself who wants him to retire. Wade claims that his reason to retire is that he wants to be the one telling himself to retire, not being forced to leave due to bad play. He is a guaranteed Hall of Famer and a top 5 shooting guard of all time. Props to the man. He'll be leaving as a great, and there's no doubt about it. This game, let's talk about another top 5 shooting guard of all time. After a few nights of cooling off and scoring below 30 points, James Harden responded to the haters around the globe by dropping 58 points, 7 assists, and 10 rebounds in a comeback win against the Heat. 58! The ability that Harden has to score the basketball is absolutely insane. He can score in all ways possible. Literally, every way you can get a bucket in the game of basketball, Harden can do it. I bet he's done it all this season. Whether it be 35 foot bombs from deep, a reverse and one layup, or a post rising dunk, Harden can do it. The MVP race has just become too hard to decide in my eyes. Does Harden, who is scoring at a universal level, deserve it for the second year in a row? Or does Giannis, a 24 year old Greek kid who has led his team to the best record in the NBA and is also a candidate for Defensive Player of the Year, deserve it? Let's see what the NBA voting panel determines. But I can guarantee you, This decision will come down to the last one or two votes. The third highest scoring game in NBA history. Yes, I repeat, the third highest scoring game in NBA history involved my boys, the Atlanta Hawks. Even though the Hawks lost to the Bulls 168-161 to in four overtimes, it was a crazy game to watch. But boy oh boy was it even more entertaining than crazy. It all started with my boy and rookie of the year, Trey Young hitting a dagger from deep to make it a three-point game with one second left in regulation. On the next possession, Otto Porter goes up for a three and gets fouled by Dwayne Dedmond. He made his three free throws and sent the game to its first overtime of many. From then on, the game went back and forth, back and forth, until the fourth overtime when Zach Levine and his crew pulled away to seal the deal. So many records were broken for both teams. It was a completely unexpected game for the NBA community. The star player of the Hawks was, of course, Mr. Trey Young. He has become the first rookie to have 45-plus points and 15-plus assists in a game. Young dropped 49 points, 16 assists, and 8 rebounds. Young has also been on fire since the All-Star break. He has scored 30 or more in 4 out of the 5 games played and has more than 8 assists in all those games. He's making a strong case for the Rookie of the Year, and I think he deserves it. He is the next Steph Curry. So everyone better watch out. Trey Young will leave this league as a leave this league as a multi-time MVP and all-time great. Mark my words. Disappointment. That's the word to describe what the Los Angeles Lakers have been since their Christmas Day defeat of the Golden State Warriors. Dropping from 4th place to 10th place and having a marginal chance of making the playoffs? Disappointing. And now you go and lose to the worst team in your conference. How much do you want the NBA community to hate you? LeBron James and the Lakers took a horrible defeat at the hands of Phoenix Suns 118-109. to It's just like they don't even want to play defense. No effort, no heart, no defense. LeBron, how do you even expect to make the playoffs if your team lets a rookie drop a 26-point double-double on you? DeAndre Aiden at 26 points and 10 rebounds to lead the way for the Suns. LeBron James has, al- has always been and will be the immortal GOAT in my mind, but I think he's coming back to earth now. He hasn't been that superhuman that we have all known for the past 8 years since the injury to his groin. With all the Davis drama and 
trade Davis trade drama and injuries. The Lakers fell off and will not rise again. Yes, I finally admit the Los Angeles Lakers are unfortunately not making the NBA playoffs this season. And that is where we end this episode of the podcast. I hope you enjoyed my hot takes of the week, and I'll be making sure to spice things up as we get closer and closer to the playoffs. The best part of all year. I'll catch you in the next episode of the NBA, the week that was. See ya.